Yes, yeah? we can. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about how to build interactive AI assisted uh, peer feedback. Um, so just now I mentioned that teachers using AI to give feedback. So um, in our EAP module, I want to make sure students have enough opportunities to write. However, due to uh, manpower uh, issue. I, as teachers, we just don't have enough time to give feedback to every writing assignment they did in class. So to make sure they can have as many practices as possible, they kind of need to know how to self-edit and to gain meaningful feedback from their peers and also themselves. So this, actually, the practice is a very hands-on practice, and it's based on COPE's learning cycle. First of all, it's an active experiment experimentation. They, they need to try out the method they have learned. So try to give the feedback and then using AI. And then next is concrete experience. They can compare the feedback and then moving on, they reflect on their experiences. And lastly, they can learn from the procedure. And then so in the future, for example, with, with a final exam where they need to write the paper or essay themselves, without AI help or peer check, they can do some self-editing and probably get a higher score. Yeah, so this is the, the, the framework that I based my practice on. So moving on, um, for the activity, if you wanna conduct this activity in your class, it might take some time. So uh, it will be very useful if it's, the lesson is designed specifically for the writing purpose. The, so first of all, you should, in the previous lesson, ask students to bring their documents to class. It should be um, in the e-version so they can easily upload their sample or their writing to the chat GPT. And then you can ask them to swap their paper with a partner. This can be done uh, with airdrop or email. First of all, you can ask them, so now we're gonna do an independent feedback and you can, as teachers, give them categories. So for example, if it's the first time they are doing this, then you can simplify the streamline. So first of all, you can say, let's today focus on only the organization. So they will, for example, you can give a few bullet points for organization and then they will do the independent feedback, trying to look for mistakes in the for, uh, under the category of organization. And then after some time, you can ask them, okay, so now you can upload the document to ChatGPT and as teacher, we again provide the prompt, okay? So the prompt will say very specifically, um, for example, list out issues with organization without giving revised version. Okay, so now this time students will see a list of um, issues. Some examples will be given later. Um, and then the next step, once they have the collection, you can ask them, so now you can compare your feedback with the feedback generated by the uh, chat GPT. So, once, so at this stage, we want to make sure they have enough time to compare because they also need to identify, for example, any examples, specific examples from um, their partner's writing. Now, next step is to give them time to try to edit uh, and to give uh, revisions or suggestions on how to um, improve the writing based on the feedback, the, the compared results. The last step is for them to orally provide the feedback and uh, suggestions uh, to their partner. So this time they already have a list probably in the um, with keywords or com completed draft. It depends on students level. We, for me, I don't want to force them to say, okay, you can only use keywords. If they want to write down um, their draft or their feedback, they can do that. So because some of the students are um, a risk avoider. So these five steps are, we can also categorize it to fit in COPE's learning cycle. The first two steps, independent feedback, AI-assisted feedback, is for them to experiment um, what what they are going to learn so they have a general idea and then the concrete experience is that they can compare their feedback and now they are more sure more certain because 
previously, when I asked the students to provide feedback to their partners, they always say, oh, it's perfect, it's good. And they, they can't really give concrete or meaningful feedback. And then the activity is kind of um, useless. So with AI to assist them, they kind of can save faces and also be more confident in giving feedback, saying uh, the, the accountability is not all on me, but I have the help. And this is, I think, a way to help them become smarter students because we don't want them to rely solely on AI. And if I only ask them to, okay, ask AI to give feedback, then they are not really thinking themselves. And also probably the summarizing part is not very uh, meaningful. And then once they completed the feedback, the reflective observation is when they think of the compared results and they give suggestion. Um, I will show you some examples from ChatGPT that um, we can see that now. Um, okay, so you can see here, I uploaded uh, the sample and then the prompt is given. Now the issues, it's identified with a few more. Now you can see some examples are given, but not all examples are given and no specific um, suggestions are provided. So at this point, the students can kind of, okay, so I want to focus on informal tone and then um, they can find out more examples and then provide revisions. Okay. The last part is to give oral feedback that abstract uh, conceptualization. So this is the part where they learn from their experience. Um, I think it's quite helpful with, from my observation. And uh, one tool is very useful to save you from training the AI is that it's in a new type of uh, function is embedded in ChatGPT. So if you go explore GPTs and then you can see this function, Academic Assistant Pro. You can ask students to use this directly and then we will have something like this. Now it will automatically generate some more follow-up questions. It is students' choice to use it or not. And you can mention it to students too. Another way is that you can, for example, uh, say, let's focus on cohesion, and then they will give you some examples. And also point out what exactly is the issue with the mistakes, however, without revision. So for more here, I think with uh, good training, the ChatGPT actually knows what kind of follow-up questions should be asked. And when students are looking for the revisions, they can also go for these like examples of good transitions to give them some basic ideas. Yeah, so this activity is from my um, observation and experience. I think in the writing class, if you have enough time, then it will be very useful. Yeah, that's it. Thank you.